so here's the bike as I say it's the new adventure bike from AJP um, the model is uh, the PR7 it's a 600cc single cylinder Husqvarna engine powered motorcycle the engine has a counterbalance which means it's pretty vibe free actually um, which makes a, a real treat when you're trying to cruise on faster roads um, rather than have those horrible vibey hands that you used to get on some of the earlier bikes so it's a pretty well bog standard bike this is how they come from the factory more or less um, they come up front with lovely LED lights really good quality more than bright enough for the rottenest of roads it's got this high screen now I noticed um, this screen really good. I was um, we bought the bikes in March this year and flew over to Porto to the factory to pick them up and rode them back. And I could ride this bike with an open face helmet and a pair of sunglasses, and that screen was really good. Just a little bit of a tickle of air over the top of the helmet, but nothing to bother my face. Um, so I could sit the sunglasses on quite quite comfortably. So as you'll see, it's uh, an adventure style bike. AGP are well renowned for their enduro motorcycles and they're building on this to produce a bike that has enduro capabilities. This would be more than capable for quite serious competition work if that's what you chose to use it for. But it's also more than capable, geared up the way it is, for a really good adventure bike. It's high off the ground, enduro type components, good bash guard, retracting foot rests, good grips for your boots. Most importantly, low slung 17 litre fuel capacity. And that's really important when you're off on some of these roads. I've been over to South America before and I know sometimes you can have a stretch of 100, 120 miles before you see a filling station. And it's really important to know you've got that little extra fuel just to see you through those, those um, worried times as it were. So I say pretty bog standard bike. We've changed the tyres, originally came with Michelin's. But we've changed these to Pirelli Scorpios. Uh, Main, main reason for that is you wanted something that's um, good on wet roads but also um, hard wearing and will give us good grip off-road there will be quite a few um, miles of off-roading we're planning at least a couple of thousand miles off-road um, getting away from the black stuff whenever we can um, we've added plate on the back here just for supporting luggage we tend to travel quite light so we'll just have some luggage at the back here tank pannier here and a little rack at the back here for carrying some tools the uh, the air intake sits up really high with the intakes at the front here um, the electrics sit up at this level so from previous experience of riding in Bolivia and, uh, Bolivia and doing river crossings I know it is important to have um, all that stuff well out of the way for when you see a river crossing and you think it's quite good and then you suddenly find it's a deep hole right in the middle and you sink a, a foot down seat classic sort of adventure style seat looks quite firm feels quite firm when you're pushing it but in actual fact Four or five hours on that so far, riding back through Portugal and uh, Spain, I didn't find it a problem at all. I didn't get off with the with the cowboy legs as I have done on previous bikes. So, not worried about that at all. I think I'm going to be really comfortable on this bike. A couple of things that you look at and you think, well, you know, cheap mirrors. But actually, they work quite well. Because I can just slide these down, push them out of the way when I'm going off-road them back up when I'm traveling through traffic and I don't really mind if they get bashed or bent they're cheap steel but I can I can straighten those out they're not going to snap a couple of little modifications we've made as I say we've changed 
change the tires put this um rack on the back here added a little additional cable here although um the bottom of this panel which i'll talk about in a moment it does have a usb um, charging point but I've added this waterproof connection uh, which enables me to um, add more than one device and charge it while I'm en route which is quite useful hydraulic clutch so that's the bike um, more than capable for the sort of journey that we're planning on um, the Husqvarna engine um, is a really rock solid engine it's been utilized by so many manufacturers nowadays so you know you're going to get spares for this even in um well in the majority of countries that spares shouldn't be a problem for the engine ajp have been very supportive um, and have promised to back us up if we have any problems en route so we've got some factory support there if needs be but i'm not anticipating we'll need it really up front the bike comes with a Samsung Galaxy tablet has the usual um, <laughs> cheap sort of speedometer and um, panel at the front here where you have your fuel gauge and your tripometer and so on but they've added this Samsung Galaxy tablet and really this is pretty well all you need and on a modern bike it's really really convenient you've got the, the uh, ability to add different sort of speedometer drives mostly just for fun and entertainment really um, but you've got Google Maps so you can plan routes obviously you need to be connected to uh, your phone for 4G or Wi-Fi to do that but you've got um, you've got route planning there if you need it I've added uh, GPS mapping system called Copilot. I've used this before um, around the world and traveling and I find it ever such a useful system. Obviously we always carry maps and a compass and the usual uh, wheel for measuring your distance but you can't beat having this for getting yourself through uh, big towns and cities. It just makes traveling so convenient. You can plan a route in here and um, go wherever you like. It's brilliant. Um, I use this little stick soft touch so I can utilize this if it's raining with my gloves on and a bit of velcro it just sticks on there never comes off won't bounce off at all very useful to that device such a lovely convenient system to have right up front very bright very clear right in your in your view so I think that's going to be quite a, uh, a bargain for us so we'll be off shortly. Um, we're planning on leaving on the 5th of December and all that's left to do now is to um, take, the, take the bikes down to Roddy and Kathy at Motor Freight who are going to crate them up and ship them off for us. Uh, if ever you need a really reliable company to ship your bike around the world, you can't beat these two. They are very, very good and very reliable. So I'll leave it at that and we'll catch up when the bikes um, loaded up and ready to take out and then we'll hopefully um, do some vlogging en route and you'll be able to catch up and see how the bikes are behaving and more importantly how, how our bones are behaving 